Welcome. This is Catholic Discovery 101, a program dedicated to sharing the Catholic faith that we love with all our friends and neighbors here in the Pocatello and Chubbuck community. I'm Diane Nisita, uh, parishioner at, at Holy Spirit on 7th Street in Pocatello here, and I have two guests today. Our guests are Sister Anthony Marie Graving and Sister Mary Paul Muller, Franciscan sisters of the Eucharist. And I learned very recently that coming up very shortly, the Franciscan Sisters of the Eucharist have a very special, two very special anniversaries. And uh, so you can, you can tell that our topic today is going to be, who are those Franciscan Sisters of the Eucharist? <laughs> welcome, <laughs> Sister Anthony Marie. Thank you. And nice welcome, Sister here. Mary Paul. Uh, before we start, usually what I do okay. is I ask for some personal background because I know our viewers out there will be interested in your call. How, how did it happen? When did it happen? When did you begin to suspect that you were called to live in community, in, in a Roman Catholic community of women religious? How did that happen and when? Who wants to start? Oh, I can go. I'm older than she is. <laughs> <laughs> um, I uh, was born and raised in a rural town in Iowa, and I was raised in a Catholic family, and I had 14 brothers and sisters. How many? 14. <laughs> I, I had 10 so brothers and four sisters. 10 and brothers. We went to Catholic school, and we were just uh, we were a, r a very rural community, and so we had sisters who are Franciscan sisters of perpetual adoration as teachers. We had lots of fun with the sisters uh, in Willey, Iowa. At that Where point. was this? Willey. It's a, it's a town of about 200 some people. I, I don't understand. Willey, spell it. W-I-L-L-E-Y. Exactly. Willey, okay. Yes. <laughs> it's close to Carroll, Iowa which okay. is like in north central Iowa. Um, and so we had lots of fun with the sisters uh, because it was a small rural community, so we got to know the sisters very well. Oh. Uh, to highlight one of the, um, the days of the week, we always had choir practice on Thursday night. And the choir practice was, after the choir practice, we had lots of fun with the sisters because they would tell us, you know, some of their jokes and some of their uh, oh. happenings within community life and it was lots of fun so I got to love the sisters in that sense and then my parents also advocated that we pray for religious vocations and for priestly vocations and we talked a lot about uh, vocations around the table the supper table at night did you were there any other vocations coming from your family no we didn't have we had some that tried out but uh, came home and got happily married, so mm -hmm. God didn't want them at that point. So uh, that was I was I was the only one. So so it, your turn. it was dependent <laughs> on those warm and loving personalities in your elementary school education. Yes, very much so. Okay, Sister Adam. Mary Paul, I, I I happen to know because I was told ahead of time that your stories are not at all alike. No. <laughs> I grew up in Washington, D.C., and I am um, one of nine children. So I have uh, nine children in our family. And my father was a professor at Catholic University. He was the head of the math department there. So we grew up very Catholic. Um, I had no intentions of becoming a religious in my wildest dreams all through college. And Nothing? N no. No hint? None. I, I went to a Catholic school and, and uh, went to one vocation retreat day when I was in the eighth grade with Benedictine sisters because we had Benedictine sisters that taught us. And we related to the sisters and had fun with them and enjoyed them. But I was very bound and determined I was going to get married. and. Um, so after I graduated from college, I and another young woman um, moved in together 
um, had an apartment. We went down to the cathedral in Washington, D.C., St. Matthew's, beautiful, beautiful church. Um, we went down for Sunday Mass, and there was no Sunday Mass. It, we had gotten the time wrong, so we went just walking around the church. And one of the little ch side chapels in the church is dedicated to St. Francis, and it had painted on the wall the the canticle of the creatures, which mm. is all of the, you know, Brother Sun, Sister Moon, you know, Brother Wolf, and Sister Water, and Mother Earth. And it was beautiful, and I, I went and I became very contemplative, you know, thinking about that. And my friend said to me, she said, what are you thinking about? And I said, well, I guess I'm thinking about being a sister. And that was the first time for me that I even thought about that. So St. Francis got you. <laughs> right. St. Francis got me. And then I, um, my, through my brother, related to a, a Benedictine community in Connecticut. And through that Benedictine community, I was introduced to the Franciscan Sisters of the Eucharist and um, met those sisters and started to relate to them through their work days, actually. And... Um, met Mother Sean, took a number of classes from Mother Sean, who is our Mother General, and, and became very enamored with the community and fell in love with the community, and so. Well, Sister Mary Paula brings us, it's a nice segue, into uh, the historical background of the Franciscan Sisters of the Eucharist, because this is a fairly new order, is it not? Yes, it is. Well, our, who's gonna take it? I think, we'll I think I'll start out with it. Um, in the, we became a, a community in, in the mid-1960s. Uh, we were asked to do experimentation within all religious communities. And we were asked by? By the church. Um, through Vatican II. Through Vatican II, that's, yeah, Correct. that's good. Um, and also, all religious were asked to look deeper into the rootedness of their co own communities and their founders or foundresses. So ours being St. Francis, we really took a look at uh, what St. Francis was telling us in relation to living religious life and going back to the spirit of the founder. And at that point, we were Franciscan sisters of perpetual adoration. Same Those sisters. were your teachers. That's right. Elementary school. Um, and so it, in relation to the spirit of the founder, St. Francis and St. Clair, we um, decided at the end of that experimentation phase that we wanted to begin a new community. Okay, the Perpetual Adoration Sisters numbered how many? Well, they were 2,000, 2,300 maybe. And then some number of you decided you there wanted were 60, to move? There were 60 of us who, who really wanted to embrace or go back to the spirit of the founder. And we wanted to embrace certain basic principles that religious life offered for us. And that was going to mass every day, uh, a, prayerful, a prayerful community, uh, a community living that community life in common uh, wearing a habit and, and being identified through habit and veil and the, the community medal, which we embrace. Um, and on, ongoing study, uh, a lot of other things that the communities at that point were still discovering for themselves. So we asked the permission of the Reverend Mother of the Franciscan Sisters of Perpetual Adoration whether we could do that. And we went to Rome. Our, both of, both uh, Mother Rosemay, who was in charge of this small little group, and the Reverend Mother for the Franciscan Sisters of Perpetual Adoration went to Rome together to seek counsel, counsel and guidance. Oh, okay. Not permission and, yet. Well, we were granted permission during the course of that okay. time. I think in, in the course of the discussion, um, Rome really said it's pretty clear that 
the two paths are really divergent at this point in that you're each, you know, going to have your own blessings, but um, it's all going to be, you're going to follow a different path. And so that's when they put the blessing on and said, you really will become a new community. That was your new 60, six zero. Right. Yes. Yes. And so we, be, we took on the name, or we were giving, given the name of Franciscan Sisters of the Eucharist right. at that point. Okay. So it was an exciting time in 1973. That's when that happened. Yes. So I assume, Sister Mary Paul, you came in after, after 73, that, and, and, and our sister Anthony Marie was there in the beginning. She was one of the, the founders. founders of the new community, the 60. Um, sisters that right. came from the Franciscan Sisters of Perpetual Adoration and then formed the new community. Okay, now, th this is wonderful information. I've, I've lived in this community about, or in, in Pocatello for about four or five years, and I didn't know this at all. Okay, mission. So you've talked about there was an, uh, an understanding that there was divergent paths. So Correct. tell us about the new path. I heard you mention you definitely wanted to be identified, therefore you right. were going to wear uh, the veil. Habit. And the habit. habit and veil, and that was one of the, one of the differences um, with the experimentation because of Vatican II, many of the religious communities that were habited changed and went into secular clothing and had a, an insignia um, like a ring or and a their cross. cross or pin mm -hmm. and our community that was one of the things that attracted me to the community was the habit and your cross um, is very distinctive right our, our cross um, is made out of nails that were taken out of a old barn in Connecticut they're a hundred years old the barn was a hundred years old and we at that point did not have an insignia for the community and so we were developing one and some of the sisters um, started to play around with the nails and they came up with this design then and that's what um, it's quite beautiful it yeah. is and we, it's very striking and many people say oh we want to make one of those <laughs> we <wanna> get <laughs> one of those so no. well, you have to become a Franciscan <laughs> sister of the Eucharist if you want one of those so, so let's continue talking about mission uh, uh, my, my next question was, uh, uh, how do you live your lives from day to day? And I would be interested, or we would be interested, in um, your devotional life, plus right. also your activity, because I know you don't just sit and pray all day long. That's right. That, that was <laughs> another, I think, big difference in the community. Franciscan Sisters of Perpetual Adoration had a specific mission in relation to health care and education, music, and... Um, and, a, and being a house sister. Right. Being a... A house sister, which meant you took care of the house, you cooked, you baked, you did the laundry for the sisters while they were at school or doing musician work or so forth, right. or nursing. So you had one sister who stayed in the house at all times and did that specific work. And as a Franciscan sister of perpetual adoration, that's what I did for many, many years. Right. And I loved it. <laughs> I loved it. Right. That included the, making beds? No. No, we each took care of our own rooms. Right. But um, the, the, the uh, work of the house, you know, cleaning, um, cooking, baking, Ironing, laundry. So then I think as, as young people were attracted to our community, we brought with us many, many divergent and different professions. So in our community currently we have two undertakers. Uh, well, and yes. Are you talking in Pocatello or in the? I'm talking in, in our larger oh. community. Uh, okay. And I know your mother house is in Connecticut. It's in Meriden, right? Connecticut, yes. right. And that's where our formation house is also, where the young okay. sisters go for formation. Um, but there are many different, we, uh, different professions. We have lawyer, we have 
um, people in healthcare, we have educators, we've started a number of schools, our own schools. Um, the Montessori School in Bridalville, Oregon. Right. The Franciscan Montessori School. Right. We have a graphic artist. I know you have a pharmacist. Yes. We have a pharmacist. Yes. Right. One of our very own from Pocatello, Idaho. <laughs> Can we say her uh, name? We sure. Her Sis Sister Michaela Serpa is a pharmacist in Connecticut at this point at right. St. Raphael's. Okay. We can give a little shout out, can't we? <laughs> right. <laughs> okay, so, you, so the women come from all different walks of life, right. actually, and make, they do their formation and then they settle in. Right. And so like our horrorium, which is our daily life schedule, what we do is we would get up Aurorium, at Aurorium. that's H-O-U-R? H-O-N-A-R-I-U-M. Honorarium. Okay, I think got it. On right. Honorarium. Okay. What <laughs> <laughs> that's what we do during the right. rest of the this, day. This, this is your daily uh, right. schedule. Okay. So we get up in the morning. Oh, we yes, please. Pray. <laughs> <laughs> we start pray. Right away. Right. We won't say what time we get up in the morning. Yeah, I know, Early. it happens to be 5.50. <laughs> That's, That's when prayer. we have to prayer. We have to be in prayer at 550. Okay. So that's morning prayer. It is the, the liturgy of the hours. We do lauds and then in the evening we do vespers and then compline. So those are the three major hours of the um, liturgy of the hours. We do not get up in the middle of the night and do matins okay. because we live an active life. If we were a contemplative order, we would probably do matins. Mm -hmm. We pray together. We eat meals together. Um, we have daily mass and rosary and meditation together. Okay, where does that fit in? Uh, we're talking daily mass after? Well, we, we, we pray it. We eat breakfast very early in the morning, some of us do. And then we pray at 10 to 6, and then we go into town for 7 o'clock Mass at St. Joseph's. Mm -hmm. And uh, in between, we have about 15 minutes after our morning prayer where we have meditation. And then we finish meditation when we get home from work. So, and then we pray at 10 to 6, eat, sometimes recreate. <laughs> depending on what kind of <laughs> schedule we run. We have counselors, and some of us that are counselors will go in for evening appointments after. But we've committed ourselves to eating meals together because we feel it's very important to have a family meal. And, and to share what, what happens during the day because right. there, there are many, many spirit moments we feel during the course of the day that help all of us. And, and us being part of the prayer chain, you know, so we, we get to know who is sick within hospitals or within the Pocatello community, and it intensifies our prayer. Are you talking them. about the Holy Spirit prayer chain? Correct. Yes. yes. Right. With Karen Sloop. Yes. Yes. So, and that's, and, and there are holy hours that we do have during the course of a week. We have one on Saturday as a community at 4.30 in the afternoon and um, sometimes on Sundays. We always have one, a community holy hour, which is worldwide as a community. They start on Sunday morning in one place of the world. And we finish in Pocatello at 10 o'clock on Sunday evening. Right. So it's, it's 24 hour adoration once a month mm -hmm. and in that period of time we pray for all of our benefactors and the world situation and but specifically we've named you know people mm -hmm. that that uh, prayer goes out to everyone that we identify and we have Christmas cards that we send to and it's our Christmas so. card and the <coughs> parish, parishes we belong to. Thank you. <laughs> I want you to talk, now, to attend to business, to your professional lives, because I'm sure everyone is interested. Uh, you've given us a lovely sense of how your spiritual life goes and how it, how it boosts 
the rest of your day. Let's talk about the rest of your day. Usually I get to work around quarter to eight in the morning. I, Can you and say I, your work? And I work at the Southeast Idaho Council of Governments as an area agency on aging director. By that I mean we have a, a, a federal and state funded program for all of those people that are 60 years of age and older. And we provide, with the state and federal money, we provide services to elderly who are 60 plus for them to stay in their own homes for as long as possible. Um, and we have a number of people that are taking advantage of that uh, through home delivered meals, through homemaker services, through respite for the caregiver. And those are growing, the, the caregiver program is growing by leaps and bounds because they want to keep their elderly folks, whether it's their parents or whether it's their grandparents or both in their own homes. So when you say caregiver program, you're talking about the family of the elderly. Correct. Th th and, and they get... Uh, or say for an example, if um, I were 75 years of age and taking care of my uncle at home, I can only do that for 24 seven for so long and then I need some rest to, to rejuvenate myself. So a caregiver or a respite person might come in in order for me to do banking or to do shopping um, in order to take care of me. Where do you find your caregivers that come in and do this respite? We contract thing? our monies out to home care agencies. We have eight caregiver agencies within the Pocatello, greater Pocatello and seven county area. We go as far south as Mount Pelier, Preston, Downey, and as far north as Shelley, over to American Falls. So it covers a 9,400 square mile area. Wow, do you, uh, how many people participate in this, do you think? At this point, there's about 150 thus far, but we're always trying to awaken people to so our So these are volunteers? No. No. No, these are paid people who go in and assist the elderly. So that means they pass some kind of qualifying uh, exams constantly? Like CNAs or certified CNAs. Or they're not nurses. They're, the nurses are the ones that administer the program Okay. to the home care agency. We could do a whole program just talking about <laughs> this, couldn't we, sister? Yes, we could. <laughs> Someday. Hmm. <laughs> hmm. Okay. <laughs> Sister Mary Paul, I know that you are the director of the Franciscan Counseling Center. Right. Tell us about what that means. What the is the Franciscan <laughs> Counseling Center? The Franciscan Counseling Center has been in Pocatello since 1978. That's Where is when that it was located? Opened. Right now it's located at 1745 Pocatello Creek Road. It's right near the uh, Red Lion. It's right next door yes. to the Outback Golf Park. Okay, and, uh, so it's I got in, that it's confused with where Sister Anthony Marie is. So you're way out in we're on the um, Red Lion area, right? The yeah. okay. other side of town. Yes. Has so it always been there? No, we've we've been in a number of different places. I think this actually is the fourth place that we fourth or fifth place that the counseling center has been housed. But we've been in this current location since 1990. Huh. So we've been there quite a while. And um, so what, what programs? Goes on there? Well, we, we have two, myself and Sister Rose Mesa, are licensed marriage and family therapists. I'm also a licensed practical counselor and a registered play therapist supervisor. So I'm credentialed to work with children. Both of us are credentialed to work with individuals, families, and groups. Did you know, Sister, when we talked about vocations, you were saying, women come in from every different area. We didn't actually uh, talk about how you came in and what your interests were. Were, were. were they always in this area? In counseling? Yeah. Um, no, I came in and I was an educator. I was in the schools and I worked in our schools. Um, started out in Canada. We had a school in Vancouver, British Columbia. So I taught there and then I've taught 
at our CREAC school here in Pocatello, mm -hmm. which is now closed, um, and then have been in, you know, Astoria, Oregon, and I've been over to Portland, Oregon, and I've been around the place, Minnesota, Michigan. I've moved around a lot <laughs> within the community. Within the community. Um, I got my training here, my counseling training here at Idaho State University, but I also have a master's degree in animal science, and that's because I wanted to do animal therapy, which is using animals with children and adults as a means of, of therapy. So I do have a co-therapist, a little dog, <laughs> who is now, uh, she's a registered um, animal therapist, therapist. pet <laughs> therapist. And she's passed her certification and, and so she is in the counseling room with me most of the time, so. I I understood uh, initially, and I, I guess that was too narrow an understanding that you were at St. Anthony's Elementary School. This year, I have added to to the counseling um, center a piece of work that 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 is for school counseling. So I go into Holy Spirit uh, through the generous donation of a particular um, individual who has. Um, provided the financial support for this and um, I am now counseling there two days a week two mornings a week and I do regularly groups, right every Tuesday and Thursday I'm in the school kind of floating around but also seeing children individually working with some problems issues that teachers have identified um, conflict managing with with the students teaching them skills, um, so doing a lot of that. I think, th I think that's very remarkable given the size of St. Anthony's School because I've heard that it's really hard to get counselors into the public school system. Right. They're, they're being axed. Uh, it's time for me to close down, actually. Oh. Believe it or not, we have, our, we have had our 28 <laughs> minutes of, <laughs> of fun here. Um, our guest today, has been uh, Sister Anthony Marie Graving and Sister Mary Paul Muller. And they are Franciscan Sisters of the Eucharist. You know, we never talked about your anniversaries. We <laughs> never got that part. <laughs> They're coming up, everybody. <laughs> we have Sister Anthony Marie is the director of the Area Agency on Aging, and Sister Mary Paul is um, Franciscan counseling center director. Did I get that right? Yes. I did. Okay, great. I thank you so much. And I, and I, I thank those of you who are uh, viewing us today. We really appreciate it. Come back and join us again soon. Uh, Catholic Discovery airs Sunday nights at 6 o'clock and Tuesday mornings at 1030. On behalf of Father John Worcester, Pastor of Holy Spirit, I am Diane Nisita, asking God to rain down all kinds of blessings on everybody here in the Thank studio you. and you out there. God bless us all, each and every one of us. Thank you. Jesus.